So what are the properties? Let's just look quickly at the properties of the aggregate demand curve and uh, let's try to understand them. So let's look uh, quickly. So what's the effect of the price level? Well, we can see that uh, we have the price level in the denominator here. So yd is decreasing in p. So when the price level is, is higher, um, the aggregate demand is lower. Uh, what's the effect of tightness? Well, uh, so we know that tau of x the matching wage is increasing in tightness. When the market's tighter, it's harder uh, to make a successful visit. So for a given amount of consumption, households have to do more visits. Of course, each visit has a cost uh, in terms of services. So when the market is tighter, just because it's harder to purchase things, the matching wage is going to increase. So tau of x goes up, something we established earlier. Now, epsilon is greater than 1. That was an assumption when we, did, uh, when we wrote down the utility function. Epsilon, the elasticity of substitution between services and uh, money balances, it's greater than 1. So epsilon minus 1 is positive. Um, so tau of x is increasing. And then 1 plus tau of x is increasing in x. Then you put that to the power of epsilon minus 1, where epsilon minus 1 is positive. So you get something that's increasing, and it's in the denominator. Uh, of our aggregate demand, so the aggregate demand is going to be, you know, it's going to be decreasing in tightness. It's decreasing in x. What's key here to establish that is that epsilon is greater than one, and tau prime is positive. You know, tau our matching wedge is increasing in x. Uh, So this is, uh, these are interesting results. Um, so we can also uh, figure out what happens uh, for various levels of tightness. So what happens if uh, the tightness is equal to um, Xm? And you remember that Xm was the tightness that we defined. Uh, it was defined such that tau at Xm, the matching wage was infinite. Uh, you know that the watching wage is increasing in tightness, and when tightness hits Xm, the matching wage becomes infinite. Uh, and so at Xm, of course, if tau is infinite, we can see that the aggregate demand is just zero. That's a useful result. And then what's uh, on the other end, the aggregate demand when tightness is zero? Well, it's just going to be uh, key epsilon 1 plus tau at 0, epsilon minus 1 times mu over p. And then uh, what we had said is that tau at 0 was equal to uh, rho over 1 minus rho. So uh, 1 plus tau at 0 um, is just 1 over 1 minus rho. And, uh, and so what we get here is that the aggregate demand at 0 and p is going to be key epsilon <coughs> 1 minus rho um, epsilon minus 1 times mu over p. Okay. Um, so it's just, you know, it's not, uh, but it's just to say that at, uh, at zero tightness, we can expect to have some positive aggregate demand that's equal to this, and we can see the determinant price level, cost of matching, and uh, the parameter key. Okay, uh, so aggregate demand is decreasing in our two arguments and takes these values here. Um, so, quick bit of intuition: why is uh, why is aggregate demand decreasing in the in tightness? Well, it's because when the market is tighter. Uh, it's more difficult to buy things. You know, the matching wedge uh, goes up. Your visits are less likely to be successful. So it's more difficult to buy services. You demand fewer services. Um, you know, we said that basically 1 plus tau x was a price of services relative to real money balances. So when tau x goes up, it looks like, you know, services become more expensive relative to uh, real wealth or real money, balance, uh, real money balances. Therefore, you want 
less services. Um, with the price level, what happens? Well, when the price level goes up, your real money balances go down, your marginal utility is going to increase uh, if you have less real wealth, and therefore, you want to also increase your marginal utility of consumption, which requires you to reduce your consumption. Um, so this is a little bit like an idea that's close to a Keynes paradox of thrift here. Um, so last thing we can do to wrap up our analysis of the aggregate demand uh, curve is just to plot it um, in two simple graphs. Uh, and you, here I use a standard uh, representation where I put prices and tightness on the y-axis, quantity on the x-axis, you know, the Marshallian representation. So here I'm going to have y, quantity of services, here I'm going to have x, uh, the market tightness, So first of all, uh, let's start by representing XM, so we can put it here. So this would be XM. And so at XM, we know that the aggregate demand is zero. So that's what we just established. Uh, so aggregate quantity demanded zero, that's going to happen at this tightness XM here. And XM, you know, we have an expression for it. We know that it's um, if you remember the definition, it's such that Q of XM is equal to rho. So you can, you can get a close form expression for XM. So at this tightness XM, aggregate demand is zero. Okay. And then what we know is when tightness is zero, so which is on the X axis here, uh, we know that aggregate demand is equal to the quantity we have uh, up here. So I can put it here. Uh, so when tightness is zero, my aggregate demand is going to be key epsilon uh, one minus rho epsilon minus one mu over p. Okay, um, and then, so this is at a tightness of zero, and then we know that the aggregate demand is decreasing in tightness, so then, you know, I can just... So here I'm just... Uh, all the, although the aggregate demand is not... Uh, linear curve, you know, um, I can just, you know, I'm just going to plot it uh, linearly here to simplify. Uh, doesn't really matter. So this is our aggregate demand. So this is y, d of x and p. And here, of course, I have x um, on the y-axis and p is taken as, a, is taken as, as fixed here. Um, and, but then what I can do if I want to is that I can also represent the aggregate demand on a, you know, on a diagram with p on the y-axis and y on the uh, y on the x-axis. So that's pretty uh, simple. You can also do that if you are interested in how the aggregate demand depends on the price level. So we can just, uh, and that would be a more standard representation because in standard model, aggregate demand only depends on the price level, there's no tightness. Um, so here I would again put Y, here I would put P, and then we know that if we go up the expression for aggregate demand, we know that um, it's basically uh, an hyperbola. Uh, where we have, uh, a fun, you know, if we take x as given, we basically have uh, some positive numbers that depend on the parameters of the model, key, mu, um, and uh, epsilon and x, and then and then it's just one over p. Uh, so here we know that we have something that looks, uh, if I plot my aggregate demand, it's going to look like an hyperbola here. So 
going to go to infinity and then it's going to then goes to infinity when the price uh, when the price is zero and um, and it tends to um, it tends to zero when the price goes to infinity Yeah, and the exact location is going to be determined by the different parameters of the model. So this is when we project our aggregate demand on the on the, a plane with uh, output and prices, and this is when we project the aggregate demand on a plane with uh, output and uh, tightness. And this is the representation that we'll, we'll use a lot because we we'll do a lot of the analysis taking prices as fixed, uh, and so we'll use uh, we'll use that here a lot.